Hello magpies, welcome to Magpie Girl and Frankie, a channel for solo female travel over 50 and other practical magic. I'm Magpie Girl and this is Frankie, a 92 Dodge 190 versatile and today is Van Tour Day. Stick around to learn why a Class B RV might be right fit for you and stick around to the very end to see some of the secret compartments that Road Trek has included in this classic design. Frankie and I are new to the scene, so don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll know when our next video arrives. So if you're ready, let's take a look. So this is Frankie, like I said, she's a 92 Dodge Road Trek 190 versatile, which means she's a class B RV. She's 19 feet long, has a 36 gallon gas tank, gets 13 miles per gallon and has a top speed of 75. These were originally manufactured in Ontario, Canada by a company called Roden Park, but they've recently been bought out by a US company and the new design is more of a sprinter van style. Whereas this is built on a Dodge van base and has the famous three upper windows that are what road treks are known for, which we'll show you when we take a look inside. Come on in. Before we go too far into the van tour, I wanted to tell you three reasons that a Class B RV was right fit for me, and in particular, a road track. The first is the size. Frankie is only 19 feet long and nine feet tall. That means she fits into a regular size parking space, she can go under low clearance barriers, and she's short enough to drive scenic highways and byways that are closed to rigs that are over 21 feet in length, which includes things like the Going to the Sun Road at Glacier National Park and the scenic byway through Kings Canyon Sequoia National Park. So if that kind of driving is important to you, make sure you get a rig that's small enough to go on those roads. The second reason I chose a road trek is because I needed to have the bed up and the table up at the same time. And road treks are one of the few uh, pre-built class B's that have that option. In their original format, they have a collapsible dinette in the back that seats four, and then they have a forward table they call a cocktail table. It's a little round or egg-shaped table that you can use the passenger and driver's seats swivel and then there's a third passenger seat, so you can seat two people, maybe three people, at this little table in the forward cabin while the bed is made. Finally, road truck owners are huge, huge fans. I was able to join a Facebook group with hundreds of road truck owners of the vintage and classic models from 74 to 94. They have helped me with things that are classic road trek issues and how to fix them, as well as how to make repairs on the cheap and what to look out for as my rig ages. Okay, let's take a look at her up close. From the rear looking towards the cab, you can see the three opera windows that road treks are famous for. When we see each other on the road, we wave with a three finger wave because of these three windows. It has the original raspberry velour upholstery. You can see all my reflectics tucked into the back seat pocket there and a 92 original maroon dashboard. Do you guys remember when everything was maroon and forest green? Yeah, I think my wedding was in those colors. <laughs> this is the dog bed where my dog Addie likes to sleep with her little seatbelt. And I come from a long line of trekkers, so driving my rig really is my happy place. Another distinctive feature of the road treks that I really love are these long shelves that run all the way from the front of the cab to the midship section. I use mine for food storage, keeping things like trail mix, granola, oatmeal up here in these glass jars. And to keep them from clinking together, I just have a compostable sponge in between each one so they don't rattle and break as we drive. This allows me to bring almost twice as many dry goods as I would otherwise be able to because the pantry storage is otherwise limited in these Class B RVs. These shelves even help me maximize my storage even more because I put these inverted command hooks behind them and now I have a place to hang my coat when I'm parked. The 92190Vs don't have a closet. Moving over to the same shelving on the other side, I use it for my bar, 
my coffee maker for when I travel with a companion who likes to drink coffee, my portable speaker, and it also stores my fire extinguisher and my umbrella. So you can see that these two long shelves create a lot of storage in the van. The previous owners also took out the fourth passenger seat and put in this shelving unit instead, which I am super grateful for. It really increases my storage. And if you're wondering how those cute little decorative bowls don't slide around when I'm driving, it's Brave Shine gel pads. I'll leave a note for you down in the comments. You've got to have them if you have an RV. This cabinet here might not seem that interesting, but it is where all the magic happens. Inside, I have not only my propane stove for cooking outside and all of my pots and pans, but below this is a trap door with two AGM Marine deep cycle batteries, which are hooked up to 200 watts of solar panels on the roof. It also contains the monitoring system so I can see how much juice I've got left in the batteries, how much is coming in from the solar, and whether or not my shore power is hooked up correctly or if it's thrown a few. I know a lot of people are really interested in the kitchen during a van tour. So this is the original kitchen without any extra cabinetry. It's so wee! Having been a tent camper in my 30s and 40s, I didn't think I would use the kitchen in my van that often. But this little kitchen is so convenient that I use it all the time. First of all, it has this cold water sink with a 13 gallon fresh water tank. It also has a 13 gallon gray water tank and a 21 gallon black water tank. In addition, it has a two burner stove that runs off of 10 gallons of propane. It lasts a really long time. And while you can't see it off screen, there's two silverware doors that I never have to worry about flying open when I drive because they're super sticky. And a standard size RV fridge, which for me, traveling solo is about 10 days worth of fresh food. The freezer really works, which is awesome because I am an ice feed, and while it barely keeps ice cream cold, I somehow always have three trays of ice ready to go. As you can see, it has a microwave, which I primarily use to store all of my crackers, chips, and bread. As you've probably picked up on, I think Roadtrike is great at designing a lot of storage into these small class Bs. For instance, this cupboard here. I can store dishes and bowls to feed four, plus they can choose from glass glasses, plastic tumblers, inflated mugs, and I still have room for my diffuser and my WeBoost system. So that's a lot that you can put into this one sort of small looking storage space. I also love this for the spice cupboard. Keep all my main spices in here. You can cook indoors, take it outside, cook outdoors. Um, I also have matches and lighters. It's amazing how much you can fit into these little spaces. This is a little hard to film, but across from the kitchen, you have the closets, both the storage closets on the right and the water closet, the WC, on the left. These open up with this kind of awkward lift and pull system. And here you can see the only storage closet in the RT, and it's not one with a clothing rack. Moving to the other side, you have the water closet. And there's the toilet. As you can see, it is a tight fit. I have a little more storage on this side for all my daily toiletries. And I've added this in-out box organizer for extra storage space. Also, there's a couple hooks here for my day pack and sometimes I'll hang a jacket here. To be honest, you guys, I am not in love with the WC. I am in love with having a toilet in my van. I honestly don't know how people live full-time in vans without their toilets. I'm only part-time in this van, six weeks at a time, and I need to have a toilet. What I hate is dumping the black tanks. Unfortunately, in the older model road treks, it's a real like get down on your knees and pull a hose out from under your vehicle. It is not easy and I am thinking about switching to a different system. So if you want to hear more about that, hit me up in the comments. Ask me your questions about how the plumbing works in an RV. I will do my best to answer you and to tell you some of the other options that I'm considering. 
Finally, let's go take a look at the bedroom. The previous owners put in this fixed bed with a memory foam topper, and I really wanted it to look like the inside of an old fashioned train car or the inside of Frida Kahlo's scarf tour. So I have embroidered my sheets. I have a summer set and a winter set. I've made these curtains with velvet fabric from Spoonflower. You can see on that one, the blue backing is a light blocking, insulating backing. So it keeps things warm and cozy in here at night. And I have a pop-in reflectix for that window there that doubles as a movie screen so I can watch movies in bed. It is such a cozy space. and the curtains are up and I have my little screen up. Use my projector to watch a little nomad land. So these are the two cupboards that I have for clothing storage. I know a lot of van lifers like to use the zippered packing cubes, but I don't like to zip and unzip to find my stuff. So I use these sorting baskets. There's one cupboard on each side. When I travel with a companion, I let them have one side and I squish all my stuff into the other. Because the bed is fixed, I gain storage underneath, like this bin, for all my shoes, and this one to carry potable water. While I do put water in my water tank, I don't really like to drink it because I think it's hard to keep those tanks sanitary, so I carry extra water with me there. When you open up the back doors, you get that big, breezy, open view that you see so often in van life photos. It is windy and noisy outside today, so I'm not going to open them today. But underneath from the back, I can also access the storage under the bed. So to build the table, you grab the pole out of the bathroom, and then this little secret storage slot here holds your table. Snap it together, swivel the seats, and before you know it, you have a table for two. And finally, there's the third passenger seat. It hides an amazing amount of storage. First of all, let me show you everything that fits into this little flap door. That tiny little flap holds my rug that I put outside to keep dirt from being tracked in, the screen for my barn door, my awning and my awning clips all fit in that little flap. And when you lift up the seat, you see I have all this storage for two to three bundles of firewood, my homemade fire starters, some newspaper and whatnot to start fire, and sometimes I throw my recycling in there until I can reach a recycling space. Okay, this is the final secret compartment. Did you guys catch it earlier? This actually opens up, and a lot of RT owners often don't know that this space exists until someone shows it to them. And this isn't really a secret, but because I have so much space in the overhead compartment, I can use my glove box for handy road snacks. Thanks for sticking around today to take a look at Frankie. She is my pride and joy and a 30 year old vehicle. So a big investment of time and care. And I really appreciate you hanging out with us today. Until we meet again, I hope you will get curious, trust your gut, and whatever you do, pick the path with the most promise.